Hey YouTube, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be going over Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Stay tuned. Okay, so with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, we often see it in this pyramid style, right? Where it's really breaking down self-actualization at the top, followed by self-esteem, love and belonging, safety and security, and physiological needs. And we're just gonna break it down a bit more. So what is Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory? Um, a theory about motivation. Uh, Maslow believes uh, people are born with the desire to continue to grow. There are five stages. Uh, people are motivated to fulfill basic needs before moving on to more advanced needs. Uh, life events can cause problems to fluctuate between the different stages. So when we scroll back up to the top, as we see at the top is self-actualization. And again, um, I know they have uh, the wording within here already, but we're really gonna break it down in a way that's digestible so we really understand it. And at the bottom is the physiological needs. So what order is the physiological stage in and what is the motivation for this stage? So this is the first stage. Again, the one that's all the way at the bottom. Uh, the motivation is to fulfill essential needs of oxygen, water, food, sleep, shelter, and clothing, which is the warmth. And, you know, when I'm doing research on it, uh, there's other things in there like uh, sex, reproduction, um, just, a, just a few other things. But I included the main ones that's really going to be applicable in the exam, and we're going to get into that. Um, so hang tight. And we also have, uh, without these things, you will die. So essentially within the, the first stage, the, the one all the way at the bottom of the pyramid, this is saying, hey, everything else is irrelevant if we're not breathing, uh, we're not getting water, we're not getting food, um, and our internal body temperature, because if it doesn't stay warm, essentially we'll die. So again, it's about prioritizing. All of that other stuff is irrelevant where, again, we go to self-actualization at the top. That is completely irrelevant and everything above it, including safety, because why? If we're not eating, sleeping, breathing, right, we can't function. We can't exist. So that's why at the base level, that's why that those needs need to be met. Now we go to the uh, second stage. Uh, what order is the safety and security stage in and what is the motivation for this stage? Um, this is the second stage. The motivation is to fulfill safety needs regarding health and wellness, financial security, and safety from injury. So now we're really jumping into the safety. And I, I know some of us may be thinking like, wait a second, shouldn't safety be first? Again, there's nothing to protect or uh nothing to remain safe if it doesn't exist because it has to be able to actually exist and function with again breathing water food shelter right your body temperature warmth because without the shelter or the warmth uh we become cold and we can't live right so then we get into the safety and at this stage this is safety and regarding our actual physical safety but also having security such as financial security and then we jump into this third stage. Um, what order is the social stage in and what is the motivation for this stage? Um, the third stage, again, the motivation is to fulfill love, friendship, intimacy, and affection by way of belonging to social groups, friends, family, and romantic partners. So as someone is continuing to have the bottom lower level needs fulfilled, so you know we're not concerned with um, the physiological stage because all those are met, right? We're not concerned with safety because, you know, we're in a comfortable position like that. That's met, right? Now we go on to the social stage. Those other stages aren't really an issue to us because they're already being met to some capacity, to an acceptable capacity, right? Now we're more so focused on, okay, I want to have that connection with people. And we're human beings. That's where we're, we're, we connect with others, right? Um, we're social creatures. So we want to be able to have that type of love, that type of intimacy, that type of affection, that type of belonging in those different areas. And we get that again from uh, social groups, 
friends, family, and romantic partners. And then after that is the esteem stage. So we're just going up in the pyramid. Um, what order is the esteem stage in? And what is the motivation for this stage? The fourth stage, the motivation to fulfill is self-respect slash confident within yourself and respect from others by way of acknowledgement. Uh, this is primarily achieved by being competent in it and achievement. So at this stage, um, we want to have that for ourselves again, that self-confidence, that self-respect for ourselves. And we want to receive that from other people. And again, it comes by way of uh, being competent at something, whether it's a work or whatever field it may be, and having that acknowledgement of that. But typically, it's uh, work-based. Um, but again, it could come from other areas. We just want that uh, self-respect for ourselves, that confidence, and that respect coming from those around us. And finally, uh, what order is the self-actualization stage in and what is the motivation for this stage? Uh, this is the fifth stage. Uh, this is an ongoing process. The motivation is to live in your purpose slash do what you are meant to do slash answer your true calling slash become the best version of yourself. Uh, you are more objective about the world we live in and do what's within your control instead of fighting reality. So I put radical acceptance here. And for those that don't know, radical acceptance um, is from DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. And in short, radical acceptance is about taking a mature approach to reality where we're not throwing our version of a tantrum where our version of a tantrum isn't necessarily kicking or screaming and rolling on the ground. Or, um, I mean, I guess it could be, but it's more so think about how we may throw a tantrum at times because of how unfair the world is and kind of do like the Homer Simpson like type of thing. This is more so accepting the world for what it is. If we're able to make changes, absolutely. But we know we often have limited control in given scenarios and given situations. So this is taking a mature approach and saying, you know what? This is the 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 world we live in. We're gonna do what we can, but we're not going to, you know, really take on all that emotional burden for the things that are beyond our control. So that's we become more objective in this when we achieve this stage of self-actualization. And also only 1%, 1% of the population consistently operates at this level. You know, I often think about of, you know, who's the real you type of thing, right? Where let's say you had $7 billion, right? $7 billion, you have so much money, you have to try to go broke. And even then you may you're most likely not going to be able to go broke because you got seven billion dollars type of thing. You know, after you help out all your loved ones, pay off all your debt, all that, you know, great stuff and everything. What do you do with your free time? Because you literally don't have to do anything. Um, and I imagine since, you know, we're social workers, we're in this field, we care about people. So we would get into some philanthropy, you know, volunteering, you know, uh, creating something to benefit others. So um, self-actualization, this is kind of, you know, you're living in your purpose. You're being the person that you were truly meant to be. You're you enjoy life and, you know, for for what it is. And, you know, you do what you can to improve uh, in the areas that you can. Um, but you're not taking on that emotional burden that comes with the things that are simply beyond our control. Now we get into the real the real stuff that uh, you guys want to know of. OK, Ray. OK. How is knowing Maslow's hierarchy of needs going to help me on the exam? And on the exams, it's not necessarily going to say, hey, what is Maslow's uh, third hierarchy of need? It's not necessarily going to say that, right? So how is knowing this going to help us on the exam? Maslow's hierarchy of needs will help you prioritize what issues need to be addressed first. And I put some examples right here. So example number one, a social worker working with a client that's homeless or a refugee uh, will want to prioritize physiological needs first uh, because it wouldn't make sense to prioritize other needs when the client is focused on basic survival. So 
What order is the physiological stage in and what is the motivation for the stage? Again, the first stage, uh, the motivation is to fulfill essential needs of oxygen, water, food, sleep, shelter, and uh, clothing or like that warmth. Um, without these things, you die. So think about that. If you're working with the homeless population or um, uh, refugees, right, they're focused more so on these needs. They're not necessarily focused on self-actualization. Do they want to get there? Sure. But things come first. And for this population in particular, they're focused on the basics, the basic basics um, so that they can survive and strive for that self-actualization because right now they need the essentials. For example, number two, a social worker working with a client that's experiencing or suspected of experiencing safety related issues will want to address that first. What do I mean by that? A social worker working with a child experiencing or suspected of experiencing abuse will want to, uh, we will want to contact Child Protective Services or CPA. A social worker working with an older adult or disabled adult who is experiencing or suspected of experiencing abuse would contact Adult Protective Services or APA. A social worker working with someone that is experiencing or suspected of experiencing domestic violence and ambivalent about leaving the relationship will want to create a safety plan with them. A social worker working with someone with an acute medical problem, so physical or mental, um, would focus on getting a medical evaluation first if um, has not already been done. So again, notice with example two, the things that we're going over. Think about the questions that we may get on the exam if you've taken practice exam questions, right? If you've done them. As social workers, we're a mandated reporters. And when we see those red flags or those safety issues come up, we want to address them. And in these uh, type of scenarios where uh, how to proceed during those domestic violence situations, right? You're meeting with uh, a client and heck, they could even say, you know, they're involved in a relationship where they're experiencing uh, physical abuse, uh, but they're unsure about leaving or not. You typically want to make a safety plan with them because we can't convince them and say, oh, you should leave and da, da, da. We may want them to leave and the ultimate goal may be, yes, we want you to eventually leave the relationship, but we're not going to convince the client to that because they have to come to that on their own. And in the meantime, we want to be able to do things such as creating a safety plan, providing them resources, um, just so that if things get even more out of hand or anything like that, they, you know, they can be safe type of thing. Generally speaking, um, a social worker working with a client experiencing social or esteem related needs, so like the next uh, higher tiers, um, is usually linked to their upbringing slash human development. So that would be the focus for that client. So that's why understanding human development is important. So again, what order is social stage in and what is the motivation for this stage? The third stage uh, is social stage and the motivation is to fulfill love, friendship, intimacy, and affection by way of belonging to social groups, friends, family, and romantic partners. And what order is the esteem stage in and what is the motivation for this stage? That is the fourth stage and the motivation to fulfill self-respect slash confidence within yourself and respect from others by way of acknowledgement. So think about, you know, Erickson, Piaget, Freud, right? They talk about the importance of human development and when certain needs are met at certain stages, how that can result in later issues uh, within life, uh, dealing with things related to what? Relationships with other people, how we interact with them, how we view ourselves. So when we're dealing with those type of situations, that's why we want to have a, a, a solid understanding of this human development and some of the issues that can potentially occur later in life in adulthood if they're not exactly met or addressed appropriately during their upbringing. And again, only 1% of the population consistently operates at the self-actualization stage. Uh, so it's extremely rare for the population, um, for that population to work with social workers. And again, that's the fifth stage, fulfillment of the previous stage uh, of the stages have been met. This is an ongoing process. Uh, the motivation is to live in your purpose, do what you are meant to do, answer your true calling, become the best version of yourself. Um, 
you are more objective about the world we live in, you know, again, the whole radical acceptance. And again, only 1% of the population consistently operates at this level. So generally speaking, like generally, like we're most likely not going to be meeting with clients focused on self-actualization. Not saying it's not possible or anything like that, but it's more so going to be on the previous stages. And then again, um, human development is really going to come into play when we're dealing with the social and esteem stage. Okay, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as I plan to uh, release more content soon. And you got this. You got this. And, you know, really looking over Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Again, we may not be asked, oh, what is the first stage? What is the last stage or anything like that? Um, but more so, it helps us say like, okay, based off of the client's presenting issue, problems, whatever they're dealing with, um, we more so want to focus on this area because according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this is the priority for them. And it tends to help us out when taking the exam. I also have a paid study group coming up this Saturday, September 10th, uh, 2022 at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you would like the details and the information, um, it'll all be in the link in the description and you pay what you want. You could pay whatever dollar amount you want and uh, we're going to rock out for about two, two-ish hours. And remember, you got this. You got this. I know, I know it can be just a lot at times. <sighs> Breathe. Tune in, get the exam game, learn how to really approach these uh, these questions on the exam, and we'll go from there. I'll see you next video. Bye.